So we're going to continue talking about circles, but now we're going to get off the coordinate plane and talk about circles just in regular space. So before we get going into this new unit, unit 15, let's get some definitions. A lot of these we've already done. Defining a circle, for example, we said a circle is all points equidistant from a center point. Okay, and that center point is a fixed point in a circle. It's not going to move. When we did rotations, the center was the point that didn't move and everything else went around the center. So it's still a fixed point. Every other point can be on the circle and can go around the circle. We always call a circle by its center. So if I call the center P, then this is circle P, and we've already discussed that, our symbol for a circle. I put the dot in there to make it so it doesn't look like an O, okay? Um, we've already discussed what the radius of a circle is. A radius is the distance. Or you could say it's a segment, depending on how you're defining it at the time, from the center of the circle to any point on the circle. Okay, so if I put any old point on the circle, point A here, my radius goes from the center to that point. So this distance is a radius or the segment itself is a radius. So the segment PA, notice I use my segment symbol, is an example of the radius. Now, we also know what a diameter is. And I'm going to come back to chord, but a diameter is a segment connecting two points on a circle. Whoops through the center. So it's important that the diameter goes through the center. You can't just connect any old two points. So if I connect this radius and go through the center to the other side, to point B, now BA is a diameter because it goes through the circle. And we know measurement-wise, a diameter equals two radii one radius equals half a diameter, that kind of thing. Okay. Now we do have this other term, chord. A chord is a segment connecting any two points on a circle. Okay. So if I had another point on my circle, point C, my chord is connecting a to C. Okay, so AC is one chord, but AB is also a chord. So a diameter is a special kind of chord because it connects two points on the circle, but the diameter is special because it goes through the center. Any other chord is just going to connect two points and doesn't do anything exciting right now. Okay, so there's some terms about that. We know a few other terms. And these are terms we've already talked about in some previous lessons. We know what a tangent line is. A tangent line is a line that intersects a circle just exactly once. Exactly one time. And we've talked extensively about tangent lines. In fact, we found equations of tangent lines. We've talked about finding the point of tangency of that tangent line. So BA, and that's a line BA, is an example of a tangent line. We talked about secant lines. They're a line that intersects a circle two times. Okay, so if I connect a line through here, it's not a very straight line. I should use my straight edge, I guess. There is line AC is a secant. But do notice something about my secant line. It contains a chord because it contains segment AC. So segment AC is a chord. Line AC is a secant line. So we've got to be very careful about what notation we're using 
when we're talking about either a chord or a secant. Okay. Now, all of those are old words, so let's look at some new terms. An arc. An arc is nothing more than part of a circle. Okay. So if I start at one point on the circle and go around the circle to another point, this creates my arc. Okay, our symbol for arc is a little curved piece like that. Okay, so that's arc AB. And then whenever we name it with two letters, we're always talking about the shortest distance because that short distance is what gives me a minor arc. A minor arc is an arc less than 180 degrees. Okay, that's what makes a minor arc. So in this case, arc AB is a minor arc because it's less than 180. A major arc, therefore, would be an arc oops, more than 180 degrees. Okay, so if I put in another point here called C, then if I went from A to C all the way around the B, that would be a major arc. So that's arc A, C, B. Notice major arcs, we have to use three letters, because if I just said major arc A, B, AB means we're only going to shortest distance anytime I use just two letters. ACB means I start at A, I have to go through C, and then it end up at B. Okay, so three letters to name a major arc, you only need two. You could use three to name a minor arc if I had another letter in between here, but we usually don't. We usually just name the minor arc with its endpoints. And of course, a semicircle, you probably already know. That's an arc of exactly 180 degrees. We measure arcs in degrees, so even if I have this arc here, even if I had another circle inside, because this arc degree and that arc degree are going to be the same degrees. It's measuring the opening. It's not the same length. Arc length is something we'll talk about in a later unit. But the degree measurements of arcs really don't matter about how long it is. It's measuring how big the opening is. In fact, that becomes very important for our next set of terms. So our next set of terms talk about central angles. And central angles are exactly what they sound like they are. They are angles located at the center of a circle. Okay. What that means is that the vertex is at the center. In fact, I'm going to write that. That's important. Vertex at center. So if I look at this, here I see this angle here. That's my center of my circle is O. And if I look at that angle, angle AOB is a central angle. So angle AOB is a good example of a central angle. Okay. Now another type of angle we have is what's called an inscribed angle. And an inscribed angle is an angle with the vertex on the circle. Okay, so we've got a couple central angles. I've got angle ACB is a central angle because its vertex is actually on the circle at C. I can also say the same thing with ADB. Its vertex is on the circle. So those are two inscribed angles. Angle ACB and angle ADB. And when we talk about central angles, we talk about and both central angles and inscribed angles, we like to compare them to their arcs. So like angle AOB intercepts arc AB. And by intercept, we mean where the ends of the angle are. Okay. So those other two points of the angle, where are they? What do they catch? In fact, all three of these, are, these angles intercept the same arc AB. Got ACB, there's AB. AOB, there's AB. ADB, there's AB. So you can almost tell what the arc is just by looking at those two letters sometimes, unless they decide to go out here somewhere. Okay? So that's what we got on that. I want you to try this out, follow, go through some GeoGebra, answer some questions, and you'll fill in the rest of this, okay? So that'll be that, and then you'll have some wiser me questions to answer. Go for it.